Intraocular pressure is the only modifiable risk factor in glaucoma, all of you know, and therefore importance of accurate assessment of this cannot be, you know, overemphasized. So, the interpretation of this, normal is <coughs> called 10 to 21, however, there is no hard and fast rule. If a person has a normal of 10, goes to 15, it's certainly glaucoma. It should be viewed in the light of central corneal thickness because falsely low readings are seen in thin corneas. Asymmetry is most important. One eye has 12, other eye has 16. Both are in the normal range, but 16 is possibly may have glaucoma. Diurnal variation again can be an initial sign of glaucoma. Amount of fall with drugs is another importance of glaucoma. We must know whether it falls with the treatment whether the treatment is effective or not. So, the principles are known to all, indentation and applanation. The new principles are contour matching and rebound. So, this is what uh, if you want, you can click a picture of this and this is my video of what Dr. Satyan was talking. It has got the maximum views on this topic world over, around 1.5 lakh plus views here. So, this is the gold standard instrument which has got five parts. And this is how it looks like. I am sure all of you must have seen. The most important thing I would like to see, this is how it looks inside. The principle is Imbert fixed law, but this law applies to the surface which are perfectly spherical, dry, flexible, elastic and infinitely thin, which I is not. So it requires modification. So for that, we have a specific size of the prism that uh, makes us uh, you know, uh, help us in able to find out this. Uh, this is running automatically. The applicator tip is the probe tip consists of doubling prism which and is used to apply cornea and it optically splits yeah. the circular area of tear film contact into two semi circles by inducing horizontal shift. So, this is the this size is in a way that uh, the errors of that inverse fixed law they, they are removed because the size is 3.06 millimeter diameter. So, this is how the correct alignment is. The two semicircles should interlock with equal size and width of the mire should be around one tenth of the diameter. So, these are the problems that can happen in this mires and uh, we should look them in the view of centration, thickness of the fluorescent ring, application force. If the rings are thick, then you need to, uh, you know, uh, wipe the patient's eye and in case they are thin, you need to add some more fluorescein. So, this is a small video which I will be showing. It is a part of the main 40 minutes video. Despite all these novel modifications of the principle of applanation, introduced in 1954, GAT still remains the gold standard instrument to measure IOP for the management of glaucoma. The probe consists of a doubling biprism which is used to applanate cornea and it optically splits the circular area of corneal contact into two horizontal semicircles by inducing horizontal shift. On touch, tear film appears as a bright yellow green spot which turns into semicircular arcs when the tonometer is moved forwards. When 3.06 mm diameter of cornea is applanated, the semicircles interlock. The thickness of these semicircles represents tear meniscus on the sides of prism. The equipment preparation includes setting the magnification at 10x, switching power to maximum illumination, maximum thickness and maximum height, bringing the blue filter in place and creating an angle of 60 degrees between illumination and microscope. Prism and tonometer should get fixed into notch. After this, turn the measuring drum to setting 1 which is equivalent to 10 millimeters of mercury. Now, the patient preparation. After informing the patient about procedure, anesthetize both eyes with properacane. Place moistened fluorescein strip in lower conjunctival sac and place head of the patient on chin rest. Fluorescence of the stained tears facilitates visualization of tear meniscus at the margin of contact between cornea and the biprism. Now, I would brief the procedure for actual measurement. After obtaining contact, Observe cornea through microscope. Regular pulsations of two exact semicircular rings or equal size show that tonometer is in correct position. These pulsations represent cardiac cycles. Drum is rotated to adjust pressure on globe 
until the internal edges of both semicircles meet at midpoint of these pulsations. Reading is multiplied by 10. Inaccurate vertical alignment can give rise to false high OP values. This part of video shows inaccurate vertical alignment which is being corrected. Inaccurate horizontal alignment means that IOP which is being recorded is different from actual intraocular pressure in the eye. Small semicircles away from each other suggest IOP is higher than shown by the drum position and large overlapping semicircles suggest drum reading is higher than actual intraocular pressure. When accurate IOP reading on drum is reached, the rings are exact semicircles of equal size, vertically well aligned and horizontally interlocked at internal edges. It is essential to emphasize that thickness of wires should be around one tenth of the total diameter of flattened area. Prolonged contact of prism with cornea can lead to corneal injury and reduction of IOP and hence should be avoided. Now the calibration check. Although the manufacturers recommend once a month calibration check of the instrument, general consensus is that 3 to 6 monthly check depending on the age of the instrument is sufficient. Calibration check is performed at scale readings of 0, 2 and 6. Precise setting of mark is key to successful calibration check. If any defect is detected in the calibration, the instrument may need to be sent to manufacturer for repair. The technique of in-house calibration may be learned by going through another video by the same author. Despite all these novel modifications of the principle. So uh, pachymetry, I told you the importance of this. However, there can be certain errors. The thin corneas, they underestimate IOP, thin corneas <coughs> overestimate. And astigmatism more than three diopters is significant because you have to press more to, able to, be, uh, to be able to apply it. Uh, then distortion on irregular cornea influences the accuracy so it cannot be uh, this instrument is not uh, very accurate for that so full this again this is the same thing you can take a picture if you missed it uh, during the previous uh, option that i gave and uh, this is the full video link the other equipments are more commonly used uh, non contact tonometer it's an air puff that generates the application computer calculates intraocular pressure and displays digitally advantages are user friendly and non anesthesia but it is not accurate should not be used in glaucoma clinics so then there can be some portable instruments which are used more useful in uh, ot and in children and uh, can be used in the opd also and tonopen is a portable handheld mackey mark based uh, tonometer and it is used for irregular corneas because it is not based on optical system the area of contact is small and uh, because it is uh, not electronic dependent pneumatic tonometer uh, again is based on mackey mark principle and is used for corneal diseased corneas and can be useful for continuous monitoring and it's basically a research tool least often used in the clinics do not confuse it with ear puff tonometer which is another name for non-contact tonometer Pascal dynamic contour tonometer, uh, actually in fact we know that all forms of tonometry currently available are affected by central corneal thickness, although the extent varies. So this uh, DCT was designed to eliminate the influence of the corneal thickness and rigidity especially for the post keratorefractive surgery cases. It's especially useful for keratorefractive surgery therefore, but it's expensive, it is running expenditure is there and it you know uh, takes a lot of time for this to use so it has not become very popular ocular response analyzer uh, this is to remove the effect of biomechanical properties there is a decline in the in measured intraocular pressure following creator refractive surgeries even if there are no changes in the central cornea thickness so this is because of the myo biomechanical changes and two parameters of corneal viscoelasticity can be measured by ocular response analyzer output and these are known as corneal hysteresis and corneal resistance factor. Uh, this is done by two applications done one while uh, the air is pressing and then one the, once you know it is coming back to normal and it's getting applinated twice. The rebound tonometer this is a handheld ballistic device the probe hits central cornea and the microprocessor analyzes the deceleration of the probe following impact. It's easy to use no anesthesia so useful in children. Transpalpebral tonometers are basically handheld uh, uh, tonometers used by the patients at home. 
there is a there are large number of other equipment which uh, are useful but cost is prohibitive and have their own limitations so the goal of glaucoma management is to promote best possible well being and quality of life with minimum glaucoma induced visual disability within a sustainable healthcare system this is european <coughs> guidelines so target pressure this is the second part of my talk strategy to achieve the goal uh, this is decided to achieve this goal and to identify the patients with glaucoma and the risk of severe visual loss to identify patients with the risk of developing glaucoma decreasing the risk of progression this is most important decreasing the risk of progression of disease to an extent which will avoid visual disability during the lifetime of the patient and will be sufficient to maintain quality of life so which pressure can do that that is our target pressure Uh, there is no single target level which is appropriate for every patient not even for every patient but rather every eye the target pressure is a dynamic entity and will be changed in case uh, suppose there is a progression going on at a particular pressure suppose you had made a target pressure of 16 so in case there is progression you have to bring it down to 14 so it should be reevaluated during the uh, assessment of the patient during the follow up of the patient so this is a well known graph whom to treat from european glaucoma guidelines this is what the normal is and this is what this line has been added by me this f line so we want the target pressure which will make parallel to this this is where the disease is because we have got this much of damage and we want the ganglion cell loss to be parallel to the normal aging loss so this is ideal this is the ideal target pressure so one how to set the target i iop so we need to see these four five things the amount of glaucomatous damage life expectancy untreated intraocular pressure the, that means the baseline pressure that additional risk factors and rate of progression and this uh, you can go through the details from the european glaucoma guidelines so consideration of target uh, intraocular pressure the likelihood of symptomatic visual loss is the thing that we you know have to assess and this is dependent on and we have to see the adverse consequences of intervention the advanced initial glaucoma damage the fast rate of progression the long life expectancy the additional risk factors all these things if present they reduce the target iop so based on these things we decide the target iop and then the status of the other eye is also you know uh, effective sometimes in decide taking mm -hmm. the decision regarding yeah. the target iop and of course the patient preferences the timings and all things have to be taken care of so adjustment of the intraocular pressure target iop over a period of time we determine the individualized target iop and uh, aim for target iop uh, sorry uh, we prescribe the treatment accordingly and re evaluate this and once there is progression we aim for the low target iop if it is stable then we follow up again any time there is a progression we aim for a lower iop if it is stable uh, and the target is reached we reevaluate it as and when required and if it is not reached then consider accepting higher iop or reevaluate or treat the patient accordingly thank you very much so, thank you dr manavdeep singh here yes sir uh, i have only one small question yes sir most glaucoma people keep saying pressure can be low still be glaucomatous yes sir okay yes sir and most of them say this vascular condition or this vascular condition can cause glaucoma etc etc right sir but ultimately when they come to treatment they will say we will operate and lower the pressure still lower because there is no alternative at the moment yes, there sir. are there are many ways to skin the cat yes sir but not all are perfect yes sir there are different ways so do you see an end to all this and one treatment for glaucoma uh, sir sir at the moment the only thing that we have is reduce the intraocular pressure the normal pressure patient can be normal as i said so the baseline pressure of an individual sir i have seen even theoretically it cannot be less than the epistolar pressure and the epistolar pressure is 10 i have seen myself pressure of 10 8 in normal people so in case a person with 8 or 10 or 11 goes to 16 17 he is definitely glaucoma 
there's no but doubt about it. But it's still within the normal limit. Still within the normal limit. So that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is that <coughs> the corneal thickness may not have been taken into consideration. And the third thing is that in West, why the incidence of normal tension glaucoma in West is much more than India. Because we do 24 hours diurnal variations. A lot of youngsters are sitting here and many of them might have been forced to do 24 hours IUP and uh, uh, having sleepless nights. This is, this is the benefit is to the patient. Patient gets, you know, uh, something like uh, normal tension glaucoma is then changed to primary open angle glaucoma diagnosis. They say up to 30% is normal tension glaucoma, which is not a fact in India. We don't have more than 10% antigen. Sure. And of course, there are rare cases in which there can be some vascular factors. Those cases are very, very uncommon. Thank you. Next is Dr. Ronnie George, another glaucoma man. There are three glaucoma people here. I am a squint man. I should never talk to them and ask them questions. Sir, I, I'll take 10 seconds to invite all of these people sitting here to the annual conference of Glaucoma Society of India, being the secretary. And uh, this is to be held in <coughs> Hayat Regency, Pune from 6th to 8th, October 2023. Next Thank will you. be in Pondicherry, but this year it's in Pune. Thank you. Ronnie.